is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. A lot of you wrote in lately saying, I am struggling with slug problems. And so in today's episode, I'm gonna be explaining the top four reasons why you probably have slugs in your garden and how you can get rid of them. Let's go. All right, so the first step to combating slugs is to take away their habitat. Now, a lot of people don't realize that their garden can be a habitat for slugs. And that's the reason, that's the big reason why they're sticking around. If you take away their habitat, they're not gonna be encouraged to stick around in your garden to eat your plants and to multiply. So you first need to look at what their habitat consists of. And it's usually a couple things. They like darkness and they like moisture. Darkness and moisture are two things that they really thrive on because of the fact that they do not like to be out in the light. That's why they come out in early morning and at dusk. Um, they're you know, very nocturnal feeders. They come out at night when they do not have you know, visibility from predators, but they also have a slime coating. And that tells you that they breathe through their skin. They actually use the slime coating to make sure that their, the gills stays nice and damp. And if, the stay, if it stays damp, they can actually breathe and survive. And so they like damp conditions. They won't go out where it's bone dry and they won't go on a very long journey where they're gonna dry out and lose that slime coating. Because not only do they breathe through their skin, but that slime coating helps them move along the ground. That's how they actually are mobile. And so that foot, that's the long muscle on the bottom of the slug, that foot requires moisture in order for them to continue to move. And the, sl uh, the slime also helps prevent against things like predators eating them. It's very, you know, very mucilaginous and it's very bad tasting. So something like a bird would eat them and say, nah, you're not the best, not the best food source. So um, there's a lot of protective measures that that moisture in the environment helps provide. And so if you take away the, uh, you know, the, the light aspect and the moisture aspect, you're gonna really effectively control slugs. All right, so the first thing you need to do to reducing their environment is look at the mulch. In the garden, we often use mulch to suppress things like weeds, especially in our walkways. And so we went with this wood chip mulch. Now this wood chip mulch is great, but you'll notice it's a really fine wood chip mulch. And the reason why is because it will actually be very loose. It does not provide a lot of protection and cover, but it also, um, because it has such a high surface area, it doesn't really like trap a lot of moisture into the soil. The top will dry out very, very easily. So um, yes, it will hold moisture down below underneath the mulch layer in the soil as a good mulch should, but it's not gonna be like, like a big, like a big hunk of wood that's gonna be like a wide piece of bark or something like that, that's gonna provide shade, right, from the sun, as well as moisture, which is gonna be um, help them to survive really close to the soil surface. Slugs are not worms, so they're not gonna burrow deep down into the soil. They're very much just surface level. So if there's areas where they can survive and thrive, that's where they're gonna be found. So looking at the mulch. Other mulches that are not great are things like leaf litter. Leaf litter, especially un, you know, unbroken down or like unshredded up unmulched leaves are very large. And they're gonna hold that moisture super close to the soil because they're so wide and they create a mat. And it works great as a mulch, but it also can really help to encourage things like slug development. And that's an environment that they're gonna survive in. And when they can survive close to a food source, that's really where you start to get a lot of a lot of bigger problems is they survive, but then they also reproduce. And then you basically have a, like a living salad bar for them to, uh, to consume. So um, try to stick away from really bulky mulches. Also, it's not uncommon for you to, even if you're using like a plastic mulch, a, like a weed barrier, those can actually be the most, uh, the most prone to slugs because it's one solid giant sheet. It's very dark and it stays very damp. So that's why I prefer to go with something that is really finely shredded, like this wood chip mulch here, very, very loose, dries out quickly on the surface, doesn't have a lot of protection. And so you're gonna take away a lot of those things that slugs need to survive. All right, the second reason why you probably have slugs in your garden has everything to do with your plant's foliage touching the soil. Now, like I talked about with mulch, much like having large chunks of wood or leaves, if you have living leaves from your plants, like in the case of this cabbage here, that absolutely can be a home for your slugs to survive. Now you'll notice we've not come through here and pruned up our cabbage, but about halfway through the season, right about early July, we'll actually do that because as the cabbage starts to grow and form, those older leaves, um, they will start to touch the soil and they provide a great home for things like slugs. So you'll notice they also, they do act as a mulch, right? So this is kind of a catch 22 here. Um, they work great at smothering weeds, 
but they also do great, they do a great job of providing a home for slugs to survive. And so um, one thing that we will typically do is we'll come in here, once the plants have grown up really nice and large, we have a great kind of living mulch. Um, it's gonna shade out any weeds, it's really gonna help to protect the soil. But some of the ones that are touching the soil, we'll come in here and break them off. And that's because we don't want any slugs to be surviving on the undersides of these leaves or underneath, you know, on the soil level, basically using these leaves as protection because then they're basically living underneath their food source. And then they're in super close contact with the rest of your garden. So I will typically come through, and this is not just with cabbages. Uh, it could be, I mean, it could be anything. You could have leaves like, you know, potato leaves, tomato leaves. It could be uh, um, squash leaves even, right? Uh, it could be cucumber leaves. Whatever leaf it is, I try to keep leaves right off the ground if possible, just because, again, that provides the shade, which they like, the darkness, and the moisture retention. So two things that they love, and you're potentially keeping them right in your garden. All right, the third reason why you probably have slugs in your garden is you're simply overwatering. Now, when you're watering your garden, it's really common to want to water the entire garden. A lot of people will use sprinklers or will use um, like a hose and we'll just kind of spray everything down. If you're doing that on a very regular basis, your garden is gonna be kept damp longer and it's not gonna be able to dry out as fast. So you'll, see, you'll start to see things like, obviously you might see signs of root rot. That's kind of a really advanced sign of overwatering. But you might also start to see signs of things like mushrooms. You know, we've had a lot of rain and we've got some little uh, ink cap mushroom starting to sprout. There's not a whole lot we can do about it because it's just been raining, which the garden does need, but it only needs so much of it. And so if the garden was not given a chance to dry out, it would provide a damp habitat. The whole garden would be a damp habitat for slugs to come in. And again, then once they find the foliage and stuff to hide under, then they're in the garden and they can stay in the garden. So it's really important that when you're watering, you allow the garden a chance, even your individual raised beds and stuff, give them a chance to dry out. Your plants do not need water all the time. And in fact, we've done a lot of videos on how you can be killing your plants with kindness by overwatering. And so um, the biggest thing I can say is giving your plants a chance to dry out not only will provide a healthier soil condition, healthier plants in the long run, but it also will help to prevent pests which can come into your garden through that excess moisture. So um, not overwatering, keeping your plants nice and dry can really help to take away the moisture which slugs love. All right, and the fourth and final reason why you probably have slugs in your garden is just environmental conditions. Now, we're here in our orchard, but this kind of simulates like a forest, obviously. We don't have a forest right near our garden, but you may. And a lot of times people have environmental conditions within close proximity to their garden. And what they don't realize is that, yeah, their garden could be a little island and a little oasis away from environmental conditions that would host slugs. But what they don't realize is that, uh, that during the morning when there's dew on the ground or at night when there's moisture or rain or whatever, slugs can crawl 25 feet in a single hour. And so um, it's a really incredible, uh, They, even though they don't have any legs, they can crawl really fast. And so 25 feet in a single hour means that if they have enough tenacity and enough, you know, uh, you know, willpower to get to your garden and they have enough time where the conditions don't really dry out and stuff, they absolutely can make it to your garden no problem at all. And so um, if you have a place like a lowlands or a wetlands, it might stay damp longer or woods with a lot of you know, forest debris and stuff. Um, obviously, you know, we have our orchard here, but you know, a good proper forest with good leaf litter on the ground and a good environment for slugs absolutely holds, uh, holds them. And then they basically can make the trek over to your garden. And if your garden then can sustain their life, then they just say, well, why am I living here? I could live in the place where I eat. Then they're in your garden. And so a lot of people don't even really realize that environmental conditions are kind of granted outside of, kind of outside of your control a little bit, but it absolutely plays a huge role into why you even have slugs in the first place. Now, I will say that slugs and snails are treated exactly the same way. They're both mussels. So um, you, know, you have slugs and snails kind of being considered the same. So I know like I have family live, that live down in Texas. They don't have slugs, but they do have snails. Here in Michigan, we don't really have, we have a few snails, but we have a bigger slug problem. They both are treated exactly the same way. And so um, if you have slugs or snails, these are four ways that you can, well, not only have them in your garden, 
but also control them in your garden. And I guess that's kind of the silver lining behind this is that they are really easy to control by letting your garden dry out, by pruning up the foliage, by having the right type of mulch or by not having any mulch at all, or you know, by making sure that your garden is not super close to those environmental conditions that can, that can help them survive and thrive. Um, other than that though, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, if you get them in your garden and they start to become a problem, obviously there's not a ton you can do. A lot of people will say, well, can I put things like copper wire down? You can, but it's very expensive and it's not totally foolproof. Um, people have said, well, can I put sand down? Yes, you can put sand down. They need a good sand layer, but sand again is something you're gonna have to bring in. It's, you know, you have to put a lot of it down in your garden. It's not the most effective thing to actually controlling them. Yes, it does work, but it's not the most effective thing. Um, and then there's other things as well, like there's products called Slug Go, not a sponsor, but they, I've used their product in the past. It's a little bait. You wanna put that away from your garden. Don't put the, it's a big misconception to put the bait in your garden. Don't put the bait in your garden. Put the bait away from your garden because it's gonna draw them away from your plants. Um, you don't wanna draw them into your garden because they might not eat the bait. They might be attracted to the bait and then find your cabbage much more appealing. So. Um, you can also use uh, products like that that are, are natural and, and can kill slugs and stuff like that. But uh, aside from that, there's not a ton you can do. So I know you're probably gonna ask about using beer as an attractant for slugs. And if I should, you know, if I'd recommend taking a cup and burying it at soil level and pouring some beer in the bottom to attract slugs. The answer is no, I don't really recommend that. The reason why is not that it doesn't work, because it does work. The slugs are attracted to the carbohydrate source and they will fall into the beer and drown. Totally effective and it does work. You're wasting a lot of money because it's beer and also um, it does kill other beneficial insects as well. Lots of beneficials fall into that liquid just the same as the slugs do. And so um, I find it to be not as effective as other preventative measures. But then also I've seen people taking like a uh, slice of a potato and throwing that in the garden face down, basically slice side down. And then the slugs will come and feed on that carbohydrate source. And that does work as well. But the thing is, is that is assuming that the slugs are already in your garden. What I would rather do is teach you how to keep them out of your garden and to really prevent them in the long run rather than give you band-aids to get through the season. So if you can fix the bigger things, the environmental things, that is really the secret to controlling slugs in the long run. And I can safely say in the seven years we've been gardening here on this property, we have never once, not once, had a slug problem. And that's because of all those measures we've talked about I know they're in the area because I've definitely seen them around, but not in my garden. I've never once seen a slime trail on a, on a leaf. Uh, I've never seen holes in our cabbage from them. I've never found them at all in our garden. And so those preventative measures definitely work and they're ones that you can take out into the garden and help you grow bigger. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because it's gonna notify you whenever we upload a new video and we have lots more coming out. So the season, despite the fact that we're almost into July, um, actually when you watch this video, it will be July. So it's like half over. I know, and that's kind of sad, but you know what's not sad? The fact that we still have half the growing season left and we're coming out with videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, we'll catch you all on the next episode, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care. Bye.